Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved on God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Titus chapter 1. Another epistle by Paul to a young to a man in the ministry about the ministry. Like uh, Timothy. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. We talked about apostles over and over. According to the faith of God's elect, and that's not election like, you know, God chooses us before we, ever, without any regard to what we, there's a free will. Now, we've talked about that before. And the acknowledging of the truth. It's owning, confessing, appearing of the truth, which is after godliness. So, the ministry is based upon the truth. The ministry is based upon Jesus Christ, who is the truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, sanctify them through, uh, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is true. John 1.1 1, 1 says, Jesus Christ is that word. So the entire work of the ministry is based upon Jesus, the Word, and the truth, which the three are one. They're all the same. Because there's all kinds of other ministries out there. They're not about Jesus. They may be about Jesus, but they're the, another Jesus. That's a lie. It's not according to the Word. And Titus means pleasing. So pleasing God is what we just read in the first verse of this chapter. It's about the truth. In hope, confidence, and a future event of eternal life, that's our hope. Every human wants to live forever. That's why the medical field is so vast and, and mega bucks. Because anybody will do anything. To attain forever living. Man will give anything and pay anything to extend life to himself or to someone that he loves. And that eternal life is offered not by snake oil, not by pills, not by medicine, but by Jesus Christ. Because we're dead. We're in sin. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, again, is Jesus Christ, our Lord. He said, well, doesn't a man, if he goes to hell and lake of fire, doesn't he have eternal life? No, John says that's the wrath of God. That's not living. A man that may be in a hospital room with third degree burns over his body, he may be living, but man, I bet you he don't want to live. And hell is so worse that the torture and the pain and the affliction that you get the Bible describes it as the wrath of God. It is no incense of called of life at all. But eternal life is to be with God. No pain, no suffering, no sorrow. That is hope. And we're going to see in Titus 2.13, the blessed hope, the happy hope is Jesus Christ. But in hope of eternal life, which God... Now, it's not which God's going to do it. The purpose God did that cannot lie. 
Now we have the God that is unable, cannot, will not, is not capable of lying. Numbers 23, 18, 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 29, Hebrews 6, 13, Psalms 89, 38, and Hebrews 6, 18. Those are verses that God will never, can never, is unable to lie. And that goes right back to the truth in verse 1. So that truth in verse 1 is the God of verse 2. And scripture with scripture, that's the word of God, John 17, 17. That word of God, John 1, 1 is Jesus. And Jesus who said, I am the truth. And when Jesus said that, he just didn't say, oh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That means go far verse of chapter 14, verse 6. That goes with scripture with scripture. And we are told in 1 Corinthians 11 that Satan has ministers. They pretend to be ministers, and yet they will lie to you. We've learned that about deceivers. We believe in a God of eternal life through the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he'll never and is not capable and will remove our lies forever when we get to glory. And we are, 1 John 1, 9, if we lie today, we can plead the blood of God, Jesus Christ, be cleansed of our sin. And God being holy and Jesus being sinless can never not lie. So the Gospels, the words of Christ, if your Bible is read, the words of Christ in red are not lies. Now, if you get somebody come up to you, a religion, non-believer, atheist, whatever, if they say, well, that's not true. That's a lie. It's something else. You need to get away from them. Because they're saying God's a liar. My Bible says God cannot lie. So there's a complication there. I'll remove the complication off God and put it on man and walk away from him. Promised before the world began. How's that? Even before we were sinners, 1 Peter 1, 2, God said, I already know, foreknowledge, run that back to the elect. God already knew we were going to sin. God already knew we were going to disobey his command. We are not going to do what God expects us to do, and we're not going to obey what God said to do. He already knew that and already sent forth his son. Now, the election is, do I choose to be a child of God, or do I choose to continue to be a child of Satan? I, I and I say, you know what? I want to choose God. God says, okay, you win. You're my son. I say, no, I don't want to believe in you, God. I don't want Jesus Christ. I'll continue to be the father of Satan. Okay, you're out. That election is based upon what I do with the word of God. Never God's going to say, oh, you're, you're saved no matter what you would do, no matter what happens, or you're damned to hell no matter what right you do. If you tell me that if a man is predestined to hell and can and absolutely can obey everything that God has said. Let's say if he's 100%. Let's say that a man is equal to Jesus Christ and God already predestined him to go to hell. Then what kind of God is that? That's a lying God. Calvin has a lying God. For the wages of sin is death. I'm a sinner. I'm going to die. With that, I am offered a gift. You never force a gift on anybody. And still, okay, you leave the gift on, on your aunt's table and you walk out. She does not have to open it. She can just stick it in the closet. She can change the name tag and give it to somebody else. She does not have to open that. Before the world began. God already knows us. And yet, for God so loved the world, knowing who we are, knowing we would reject him, know that we would lie against him, know that we would go against him, and know that his church will, will defile his holy name. God still gives us eternal life. I've always said, man, I don't know why God didn't die for a dog. A dog is more obedient than God. I mean, man. A dog is patient. A dog loves you. A dog is faithful. 
Man, he's a dog. And I don't mean to insult any dogs. But, has in due times, seasonable, manifested, made clear and evident, his word through preaching. No program. The salvation of the eternal life that God cannot lie that happened before the earth began and is made known and is manifested, made known, is by his word that is preached. There's no other way. Well, who showed you the words that, that you proclaimed Jesus as your Savior? Oh, I had this magazine given to me. I had this missile given to me. I seen these golden plates. I saw the, the vision of this prophet. It's not the words. Which is committed unto me, Paul, according to the commandment of God our Savior. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. God our Savior with a capital S? Who suffered and died that my sins may be washed away, that I may be certified as a Christian by the empty tomb? That's Jesus Christ. Paul, you made a big mistake here. You are proclaiming that my Savior, Jesus Christ, is God, and yet that is nothing wrong. That is the truth because God that cannot lie. You've got to make sure that your God is your Savior and your Savior is God. Or He can't save you. Okay, let's look at it from me without doing injustice to Jesus. We all believe that He was sinless, right? Well, how do you not make Him God? There's never been a, a sinless man on this earth. You say Adam. No, nah, he sinned, didn't he? You say Eve. Ah, she sinned, didn't she? And yet Jesus never and will never ever sin. He's got to be God just by that belief. So you must think if he's not God, you got a back of your mind and your doctrine, you got to preach that he did some sin on the way. You, you say, really? Do they say that? Uh, didn't he supposed to have a affair with Mary Magdalene? Wouldn't that be a uh, sin? If you accuse, if, if your modern Bible removes without a cause about being angry, and a couple chapters later he got angry with the Pharisees, then he would be a sinner. So see, some modern Bibles, by removing, make Jesus a sinner. And when you make Jesus a sinner, you don't make him God. And you don't have a salvation. We're getting the ministry. We're, this is the third book about the ministry. And the ministry better behold that Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, all right? Titus is not physically of Paul's loins, as the Bible would say. Titus is another man that, that Paul witnessed to that got saved through the preaching of Paul. And Paul said, hey, people of, of Israel and Jerusalem, I got another notch in my belt. Another man trusted Jesus. What would you do with him? I just loved him. No, no. He took the time to raise Timothy. He took the time to raise Titus. What man would there be if he were to have a child born to him and not take care of that child? And you look at the, the fathers today in 2017 and you look at the results of the children that don't even know who their fathers are. Listen, I'm sorry. Things happen. It's miserable probably for a child to grow up with a father, but 
That's a great illustration here because Titus trusted God as his father through Paul. And Paul took the reins and trained up the uh, newborn, newborn, and raised him through infancy and a young child. John's going to write in 1 John, little children. Well, you don't send a little child out on his own. You help him and grow. You know, you show him this is how you hit the ball. This is how you pedal the bike. This is how you, you know. And then once they learn that skill, you go to the next skill. My own son after the common faith. And there are too many people out there who are, they're preaching the word. People are getting saved. And then they leave and go find someone else so they can say, we got 500 saved. And how big is your nursery? What do you mean? How many people have you left in diapers as a newborn babe in Christ? You didn't change their diaper? They're still in their filth. You think that pleases God? Remember, God's not into numbers. Grace comes from God. Mercy comes from God. And peace comes from God, from God the Father, capital F, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Wait a minute, Paul, you just said God's the Savior. Now you say Jesus Christ is the Savior. Boom, nailed it. And then he even goes so far as say, God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, they're one. There's no shadow of a doubt. You say, well, leave that off. Stop talking about that subject. No, I'm surrounded by people go door to door telling them about a Jesus who's not God. There are people who proclaim to be saved and Jesus, who is God, is not their God because their Jesus will drink beer with them. That's not God. Their Jesus will approve of their filthy life. Their Jesus may make 500 left-hand turns on a Sunday. Their Jesus, who is not God, who is not holy, who is not sinless, will go with their own personal sinful life and just enjoy it with them. That's not a God who is Jesus. God said in the Old Testament, Be ye holy, for I am holy. There's a minor Jesus out there. Now, Jesus is supposed to be sinless, but yet, to the modern Christian, Jesus is full of sins. You don't hear that preached. For this cause. For what cause? He's got grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. For this cause left I thee in Crete. Oh, another one he's left. To establish order. Titus, and we know from Timothy that Paul will not leave a person unless he is settled and able. Titus, we're in Crete. Yes, sir. There needs to be work here. Yeah, there does. You're the man, Titus. That thou should sit in order. A beginning of the ministry and the ministry, again, is to set and establish order first. Okay? We're Christians. Yeah, we just received Christ. First thing we need to do is order. We need to know what Christians are supposed to do and we're to know what Christians are not supposed to do. Let's lay that one down right now. Let's know what a Christian is. That's the first order. You receive Christ. That's the foundation, according to Corinthians. And the foundation no other man can lay, but that is Jesus Christ. All right? You've got the foundation. You're saved. Let's start building that building. All right? Now, the frame of this building, who are you? You're a Christian? What's a Christian? Here comes the frame. We're going to build up. Titus is going to build up on that frame by teaching them. 
set in order the things that are wanting. There are wanting things in the ministry. You got to know or want what am I supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to be doing? There are things that need to be letters, scripture. And ordained elders in every city, okay? We've already learned from Timothy. We've already studied Timothy. The Holy Spirit said put first and second Timothy first, then Titus. Why? Ordained elders. We've already seen the qualifications for elders. We're going to see it again. But he also tells Timothy, don't lay hands suddenly on no man. Titus would have been getting those instructions. So it's not just go lay your hands on everybody you see, but men that are able and worthy to have your hands laid on for the ministry in every city. You know what modern Bible-believing churches do? They start a church in one city, and they gather all the 14,000 cities around them. And they don't say to any of the people in that church, you know, you are growing in the Lord. You are strengthening the Lord. I'm going to lay my hands on you, and you're going to go to that city border that borders our city. And you're going to start a church there, and you're going to teach those people, and we're going to send people up. It's called Jerusalem. That's our houses, our families, our neighbors. Samaria, that's the next city. And then other parts of the world. See, we support missionaries, but we leave the people without local churches. So let's say you got a church and you drive far to that church. And let's say your car breaks down. You are unable to fix that car for a month. What are you going to do with church now? There's nowhere to walk. There's no local church. Local churches in every city. Every city. Churches, peoples, homes. It's not one building church. It's not even buildings. Home churches. I don't care what you think about living room ministries. As I have appointed thee. See, Paul taught. Titus. Paul had given him a commandment. Paul had given him words. Acts 14, 23. This is what you need to do for the ministry. Go do it. Now, if any be blameless. We, we went to this list in Timothy. Without blame. Now they blame Jesus. And yet they found no fault in him. The husband of one wife, and this great, go to the first Timothy chapter three and compare these two lists. Having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. Look at the children today. I'm just reading a note here. I have no idea what that note means. For a bishop, run back to the elders in verse 5, must be blameless, without blame, as the steward workman of God. A steward on a ship is an important person that is laid with valuable material. He has control of the safe. Not self-willed. Oh, I'm not doing this just because it's easy job and, uh, you know, easy money. I want the fame. I want everybody to worship me. Not soon angry. Well, didn't say not angry, but he didn't have a short fuse. Not given to wine. That matches Timothy. No striker. Timothy. Not given to filthy liquor. Don't. It, it's not. Cadillacs, when I grew up, you know, with Cadillacs and gold teeth preachers. I don't know what it is today. I don't want to know. But a lover of hospitality like Timothy. Hospitality. Think of a hospital. 
People are sick. They need help. They need care. They need love. A lover of good men. Ooh. Ouch. Who are the men that love you? Sober. Serious. And also you can take it sober. You're not drinking. Just. Holy. Temperate. Again, temperate. Temperature. Run back to Timothy. Holding fast. Getting a grip. The faithful word. There's the word again. Verse 3. Manifested his word through preaching. Verse 9. That faithful word. As he has been taught. So bishops, elders, stewards of God need to be taught. They ain't going to get it from the Holy Spirit sitting and not going anywhere. You've got to be part of assembly. You've got to have someone teach you. Having been taught that he, 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 no women, he may be able by sound doctrine, the teaching, what he was taught, the teaching, both to exhort and convince the gain slayers. I mean, sayers, I say slayers. <laughs> they kill you. You got somebody who's in gain of the church. Sell the insurance. Who want to make marketeers of your congregation. Who's got products that they can sell. You are to exhort and you are to convince them they are wrong. That's part of your ministry. You don't know how many people creep into a church. Act like they say. Pronounce them to be saved. So they can get the congregation to buy something they got. I've seen that. When I was a first a Christian, there was there was an insurance company. I don't know what, where, I don't care. But they were, you infiltrate the church to sell insurance. Wickedness. Gain say you, you go in there to make money. And Titus, you exhort them and convince them. Don't you welcome them. Don't you allow them. Don't you give them liberty. For there are many unruly, they don't follow the rules, and vain emptiness, worthlessness, talkers. James 1.26, 1 Timothy 1.6. And deceivers, imposters, especially they of the circumcision, the Jews. The Jews have got a problem right now. They're trying to get the Gentiles back under the law. So the Jews are out there going into the churches, entering in, and okay, you're saved as Jesus, that's very much nice, but you've got to do what the law says. And if you come down to Jerusalem, you just bring your money, they'll sell you lamb, turtle doves, and whatever you need. Remember what Jesus did? He kicked over the table. You can serve your Jesus, but, you know, let's get a little temple worship here. I can allow you to have Jesus, but you got to have once a year, you got to have Easter Bunny, and you got to have a Christmas tree, the second part of the year. You can do that, right? You, yeah, sure. Your Jesus will allow you to have our holidays in your church. It's okay. And that's church history. And this is something that Paul said, Titus, you preach against. Well, they did it in Acts, too. Yep. The princess, Di uh, the, princess Di the goddess Diana, the, the sculptors of the statues, they got mad when people started converting because yep. they weren't buying yeah. their silver and gold statues, so they went after the apostles. The whole thing with, with the Good Friday, you can't eat meat but fish. Because the fishermen were losing profit and they went to the Pope and said, hey, we'll be more part of the church if you do something with these people so they can eat our fish. The fishermen needed money. 
like the, like the silversmith of Diana. Hey, we're losing our money here. We're in trouble. Yeah, it's okay if you carry a little... Hey, I'll tell you what we'll do. We won't make silver signs. To, well, we'll make them. But we'll, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll make silver crosses. Is that okay? You want, you want a silver cross? Can we make silver crosses? Can you have that one? You can? All right. And in the back of the shop, they're still making silver shrines to Diana. And these people, they're deceiving the church. The church has been deceived. And preachers are called to preach against that. Here, the Jews are causing problems. Uh, we have already read one church, uh, Galatia. Man, they've got the law back in there. Who else would bring the law back in? The Jews. James, in Jerusalem, a Jew that is saved, say, listen, flee fornication, things strangled in blood. And there was something else, I forget it was. That's, what, that's the only things you put on those Gentiles. There was nothing else. But the Jews and people are trying to bring in their godly worship. I mean, their false godly worship. Drinking blood. Deceivers and talkers. They get up there and they orientate. Titus, you have somebody come teach or preach at your church. You better be very careful who that person is. If they're not supposed to be talking, don't let them talk. Whose mouth, see, must be stopped. Why? Why must they be stopped? Because look at the church in 2017. Look at your, your radio dial. Look at your TV channels of preachers. Watch this. Who subvert whole houses. Overthrow, ruin utterly, corrupt, pervert. Whole houses, family and the church. Galatian church was, was perverted. To the point Paul says about that church, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth they're not even listening to the truth you know one church today that don't listen to the truth and yet the preacher gets up and preaches and preaches and preaches teaching things which they ought not there are things being said out of the churches of, of the world today they ought not be saying but they're being allowed to say for filthy lucre's sake we're doing it for the money. Glass pulpit churches, mega churches. That's what God feels about your mega churches. First Timothy 6 5 on that. One of themselves, these people who are doing it, even a prophet of their own said, the Christians are always liars. That what a verse what does it say over here about God who never lied? These prophets are lying, evil beasts, slow bellies. These people, the people who represent these people are saying, yeah, they're liars. There are people today who come out of the, of the Catholic Church, who come out of the Jehovah Witnesses, who are ex-Mormons, and they are saying, those people are liars. I was part of it. I was one of them. We need to listen to them. We need to aid them and help them to get back into these occults and bring them out. But we give more to the people who are not supposed to be talking rather than the ones that have the true testimony. There are people who come out of those religions for God to use for the people that are in that religion. Slow bellies, uh, lazy gluttons. How's that? God, you could be more. God, you're just so bad. Evil beasts. Animal characteristic. Hmm. And it, Christians, these people are saying about these people. That's the testimony of these people that subvert whole houses, families, and churches. So they can get rich. Paul says, this witness is true. Paul has heard them, and he has found it. It is true. What is it again? 
true. It's right. She said, I'm the way, the truth. This chapter is dealing with the truth. About the truth. Everything of the truth. Your ministry, Titus, ought to be the truth. And if they are not speaking the truth, you rebuke them. And they'll sit behind their desk and behind that chair. Oh, touch not the Lord's anointed. Who do you think you are? I've been in the ministry all these years. You don't know nothing. Okay, fine. Then let God rebuke you. That they may be sound in the faith. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. That they may be sound in the faith. Rebuke. That's what I didn't read. I didn't read that purposely. Paul says rebuke them sharply. Not just that they may be sound in the faith. Without the rebuke, they're not going to know what sound in the faith is. Rebuke is to blame, to pass a charge sharply. Don't you just be a wimpy preacher, man. You preach it, brother. Amen. Glory to God. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. That's what Paul kept saying to Timothy. There's something about these Jewish fables that are floating around. And commandments of men. Wash your hands before you eat. Where'd you find that one? You can't travel this amount of distance on a Sabbath day. You can't heal on a Sabbath day. Oh, you can't eat this food. You can't do this. You can't do that. Blah, 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 blah. That's works. That turn from the, what's that word again? Verse chapter one, true. Oh, our clergy cannot marry. But God honored and ordained the marriage. God says in Hebrews 13, man, that marriage bed is wonderful. And Hebrew, I mean, 1 Corinthians 7. I am with that husband and wife. It is so sacred that even if they say, you know what, we're going to fast intimacy Satan's like, hey, 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 okay. And when you find these, these occults and these false teachers preaching falsehood, they're to be rebuked sharply. And it's against the truth. Baptism is not a means of salvation. It will damn your hell, your sin to hell. Saying this prayer will damn your sin to, into hell. It is not the truth. Unto the pure, that is without man's touch. You know, you can have a lake come down from a mountain. And if no animal or man touched it, it would be pure. But walk into that water, it's been, been messed. It's been perverted. All things are pure. So if it's pure, it, be, it is pure. It's plain and simple. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, that means you're not saved, there's no faith, is nothing pure. Any lost man and any person that goes against the Bible, they are defiled, they are unbelieving, and they're not pure. God hates the sin, but loves the sinner that violates 115. A sinner is defiled, and he's unbelieving. He is not pure. He can't be loved. But even their mind, what they think, and conscience is defiled. Body, soul, and spirit, and thoughts, and all that, they're defiled. They're no good. They profess that they know God. Ooh, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. But in works, they deny him. Well, I'm not doing that. That's stupid. I'm going to leave my own life. I'm saved. That's good enough. I'm going to heaven. That's okay. 
Bible says to do this. No, I'm not going to do that. You keep putting things on us. You keep burdening us. Being abominable, very hateful, rebellious. Is that the word? Rebellious. That's a word. Very hateful. Loathsome. That's what God thinks about a man. Oh, I'm a Christian and doesn't do with the Bible or anything that God says to do. And disobedient. They're not listening. And unto every good work, everything that is good of God, reprobate. Abandon in sin and error. God says that, you know, if you profess to be a Christian, you ain't doing right, you are a reprobate. Ooh. The Bible says, when we get to glory, we'll be given a new name. I hope we never get that name. That would not be a name that God, you would want God to give you for return. What's your name? I'm faithful. I'm loving. I'm kind. What's your name? Reprobate. What? Reprobate. Well, how on earth did you get that name? Oh, never mind. Let's open the tight. No, let's not open the titus. Our new name is going to probably be based upon the character we were. You know how they named Jewish babies in the Old Testament? They didn't name them before birth. They, you know, Mary and Joseph didn't go get a baby book. Hannah, when she had Samuel, did not get a baby book. That child would live. After birth, and at some time, that something would happen to that child, that child would have a character. Esau was given the name Esau because he meant red. That boy came out red and hairy. Esau, wow. Jacob's name would have to come back a little bit later because it means surplanter. Well, how long is it going to take for them to realize that Jacob would be a surplanter? Two, three years old? <laughs> The Jewish names are given by the character of the child. The meaning. A purpose. And we've got to realize that there are people out there who are in the ministry. of Talking about Titus and Timothy. The ministry. And they are profane. And they are profaning the ministry. And that is why one of the messes of the churches are today. Because people are believing this crap. And ministers of the Bible are not preaching the truth. They're far and few. And many have given up the battle because you know what? Christians don't care. And they don't. 